Hi there, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm fishing the lower reaches of the Bristol Channel and I'm going to be targeting smooth hounds. Now this particular venue can be a really good option at this time of year for numbers of fish. They're not always huge, but like I say, numbers of fish, good sport, consistent fishing. I've got a couple of rods with me. I've got a bag full of frozen peeler crabs. I'm going to go and get some baits in the water. Let's hope the fish want to show. nice to be fishing somewhere like this. There's not many pebbly beaches back home that are so flat and so comfortable to fish from. It really does make a change to traipsing around in the mud and slipping about on the rocks. Absolutely perfect conditions today as well. Let's hope the fish think so. So as far as rods and reels go, I'm pretty much using the same kind of tackle that I'd be using back home. I, I don't like to chop and change too much. When I'm using the same rods and the, the same reels, I know exactly where I'm at with everything. I think it's all well and good having different rods and different reels for various situations. But personally for me, I'd sooner use the one rod, the one type of reel, and like I say, you know exactly where you are then. So when it comes to rigs today, I'm going to keep that simple and I'll be using exactly the same thing as I would have been using back home. So pulley rig, and this is a length of 80 pound mono running all the way through. There's a crimp bead, swivel, bead, trace line. And that's running all the way through. As I say, there's no second swivel. Now, some people like to put a swivel in there. Um, I do myself on occasions, but with this today, like I say, straight through. And that's going to 2.0 Varivas Big Mouth Extra. And that hook there at the top is a 4.0 Varivas Full Circle. Now, this is a bit of an experiment for me. It's not something I've used before. I've always been a real fan of the Varivas Chinu hook. I've found them to be fantastic. But a few friends have put me onto these and said it's worth a go. So, like I say, a bit of an experiment today with those, but we'll give it a blast. So, there we go. Frozen crab bait whipped onto the hooks. Look how much that 4.0 Varivas full circle hook is really standing out from the bait. Hopefully, it's going to find the fish's mouth. I mean, it looks pretty nuts to me, but like I say, I know a lot of people who've had a great deal of success using this particular hook. So I'm going to give it a blast. Always good to try something new. So I've just cast that bait out and what should appear in front of me, the most enormous seal we've ever seen. Now, I don't know if that's gonna have a, a knock-on effect today or not. Let's hope not. There's a bit of tide there at the moment. This is good. This is definitely a good thing. And the sun's really trying to, you yeah, know, that seal's still out there. The sun's really trying to come through now. It's borderline sunglasses. That's better, it takes the glare off a bit. Now, a lot of people like to fish with the ratchet on and the clutch open when they're fishing for smooth hounds. I mean, personally, for me, I like to be right next to the rods. I don't see any need to, to set the ratchet. I often think that, you know, when you do that, the fish is pulling away with the bait, but there's no resistance there to actually get hooked. I'd much sooner keep a tight line 
Okay, let's get a get a second bait on this rig here. So with this second rig, I've got my old faithful Varivas Chinu hook. Now, this hook has served me well over the years, but it's always good to keep an open mind and, and try different things, try new things. That seal is now right in front of me, quite a long way out. I won't even pick it up on the camera. Yeah, let's get these hooks baited up. Yeah, she's still having a play with the bait. Still, it's a bite on the first cast. We shouldn't really complain about that. And that is a dogfish. I tell you what, though, these Dyrosol Tiger reels, they are fantastic for retrieving fish like dogfish. They've just got so much torque. You can literally just keep winding on the reel. Not too much further. It wasn't a huge cast in fairness. It's, uh, it's not a venue really where you need to be launching a lead to the horizon. Because you do get a lot of tide here, especially on the ebb, which is when I would imagine we're gonna see the, the smooth hounds. What have we got? It's a dog. I said it would be. Very, he, very small one as well. Well, there we go. Very, very small dogfish. Just lip hooked on the bottom hook. But like I say, if that fish is on that bait, then a smooth hound's not going to find it. And you've literally got to wind it in and get another bait straight back out there. Oh, there we go. There's a bite. No. It's not looking very much like a smooth hound. And the smooth hound bites here, they do tend to be quite fearsome because they're predominantly pack fish. And when they're feeding in groups, they're competing against each other. They'll come across a bait and they'll be fighting for it, which causes those aggressive takes. So my guess that that is probably what we don't want to be catching, the dogfish. I'm going to tighten the line up on this. It's, like I say, it probably is a dogfish. Just cause the line to go a little bit slack there. It will be interesting to see how well that fish is hooked on the, on the circle hook. I think we'll give it a few moments anyway. Well, as I look on, as the, uh, the dogfish continues to devour that bait, I'm just getting this other rig sorted out for the second rod. Like I say, it's nice sometimes just to, to fish an alternative tactic in the hope that perhaps there's a, a different species out there. What I have got on my rigs today, which I haven't mentioned so far, is, is a weak link system. Just a short length of 15 pound mono to the lead. So if the lead does get jammed up, you can pull for a break and only lose the lead. That's the theory anyway. Is it me or has that line just gone very, very, very slack? 
I'd say that's more than a dogfish. Blimey, that is slack as well. Is the fish still there? No. Okay, well, let's change that one anyway, I reckon. It's been, been out there a long time. And there is actually a dogfish there, but it's... Oh, no, that's actually pulling back a bit. It'd be nice if it was something other than a dog. Maybe a huss? Didn't feel like a smooth hound. It's not the dead weight of a dogfish. And it's funny because if it wasn't for the... for the setting up of that other rod, I would have wound this one in a little while ago. And I would have missed what have we got here? What have we got here? I just came up on the top there and it's swimming about a bit. Is it a... Oh, it is a smooth hound. Well, look at that. <laughs> this goes to show exactly what I was saying. If I'd have wound that dogfish in, the smooth hound would never have come along. So what we've got there is actually a smooth hound and a dogfish on the panel. And you can see the dogfish has taken the, the bottom hook, but it's left that top hook exposed. And that's what the smooth hound's picked up. Now I've got to say, that is a particularly small smooth hound, nothing to be proud about. But uh, it's a smooth hound all the same, and it's a start. I thought the bite was a bit different, that big slack liner that we saw. Let's, uh, let's get these little babies back and hopefully we'll find a bigger one in a minute. Well, it's nice to be getting a few bites, even if they're not the biggest fish in the world. It's always good to see the rod tip moving. It's a bit of fun. So I have relocated to the, the slightly higher ledge. I mean, the tide line is just below where I was fishing just now. And it is a slightly smaller tide today, so it should have been fine, but always better to be safe than sorry. Not that there's any immediate danger. It's just a case of not wanting to get wet. So there we go, there's that nice little mackerel bait. Well, I say little, it's quite a large bait actually. I'm just going to flick that one out, probably 20 yards or so. Like I said, it could be a bass moving through, we could see a bull huss. Let's go and uh, find out. cast that one well out of the way of the main rod. And see, this is when you get yourself in a pickle using two rods. I've got a bite on the other rod, and I haven't baited up a spare trace for that rod yet. So I'm in a quandary now. If, if that left-hand rod does take off, you know, whether I rush a baited trace or, or pick up the rod and go for the fish. So it is looking like a, a dogfish bite, but as you've just seen, it's very feasible that although a dogfish has picked up that bait, then there'll still be a hook exposed and uh, a smooth hand could find it anyway. Enough waffle, let's get that other bait sorted out.
Lovely. I think the ebbing tide is just starting to get underway now. The wind's also picked up. I've got it right in my face and I didn't think that would be the case today. That's okay. I really do feel there'll be some, some bigger smooth hounds through here in a bit, so we'll keep plugging away. That's all you can do. Well, I think I've landed five or six dogfish now, and it's, you know, you can kind of live with that. That's not the end of the world. That's, that's not getting dogged out, as they like to say. Still a real pest, though, when you're, when you're trying for other fish and the, the dogfish are on the bait straight away. I do find it quite amusing how the boats here have got the entire bay to play with and they, they choose to parade up and down in front of the only angler on the beach. Still, never mind, it's not gonna, it's not gonna affect the fishing. Just gotta be a little bit careful not to go putting a lead on top of them. Well, it would have been lovely to have shown you some bigger smooth hounds that day, but for whatever reason, the fish just were not playing ball. And would you believe it's now 10 months later, and this is the first opportunity I've had to try and put a video together. Anyway, something a little bit different today. I've headed down the shores of the Bristol Channel, where I'm going to be targeting bullhuss. Now, perfect conditions. The wind has been on shore for the last few days. It's chopped the sea up. That combined with big tides means coloured water, which means it's favourable conditions for bullhuss even in daylight. So, got a bit of a walk on my hands now, but within a short space of time, I'll have some baits in the water. We'll see what comes along. Well, I've finally got a bait in the water and uh, I would have talked you through the tackle I'm using today but it was absolutely hammering down with rain when I, when I first arrived here so it's just a case of getting it sorted and getting one out there. Got a, a big bait out there at the moment, fairly big bait anyway, a good sized lump of squid. But on the second rod I'm going to fish some smaller hooks to try and catch some rocklin because they're also a brilliant hus bait. So when I'm scratching for bait fish at real close range, I've just got a really simple two hook flapping rig. I don't use any elastic on the hooks, tiny little bits of mackerel, just like that. A couple of those lobbed 20 or 30 yards and we'll see what comes along. And while I was baiting that one up, the other rod's gone slack, you didn't tell me. Now, I think rather than jump the gun this time, I'm, I'm going to hold the rod and... Oh, yeah, felt that. Thought something happened then, anyway. I'll just give it a moment or two. It's not a huge bait, but it's, it's not a tiny bait either. And there's no tide running at the moment, so... The fish aren't going to hook themselves too easily. Certainly very dark here on this north facing coast at this time of year. Don't get a lot of sunshine. You can see it sort of further out in the channel, but 
with the cliffs towering behind you, it does knock it out. Yeah, I can feel something having a, a pull about with this bait anyway. Now, is it just going to be a dogfish? Let's hope not. Wouldn't be that surprised to see a, a good sized conger today as well. That's pulling. That was pulling around a bit then. I think it's probably time to think about winding down to this and trying to set the hooks. Go on, just give me one more indication that you're there. going to do anything else. Just thinking about it. Go on. That's it. Go on. Yeah. That'll do. Well, it feels like something more than a, a dogfish anyway. Nice bit of weight there. Now, what I haven't said yet is that bull huts are notorious for getting in under your feet. You think they're landed, and then the hook just pulls. Now, what is it? Is it a huss or an eel? I can see it on the surface out there. Not very far out. I think it is actually an eel. Yeah, sure is. Never mind. Not sure what's gone on there. It looks, looks like a double shot of congas, actually. <laughs> that gives you some idea of how many congas there are in the Bristol Channel right now when you're catching them two at a time on a panel rig. They're not bullhuss, so let's get them back in the water. That water really looks a lovely colour as well. You know, and see these casts out and then possibly move move a bit closer to the water. So my tackle today is a little bit different to what you've seen me using previously. These are heavier duty reels, they're Sartiga 30 models and I've actually loaded those up with 25 pound line. Now if you're trying to pull a fish from the kelp here it's very beneficial to have that extra bit of strength in the line and it can often be when you're pulling for a break right up until the last second when you think it's going to snap that you'll actually ease the pass out of the kelp. Rods are my current go-to's, the Anyfish Anywhere Grand Prix Pro. Previous to this, you've seen me using the standard Grand Prix or the original Grand Prix, if you like. Uh, these are a lot firmer in the tip. Uh, they're lighter, lower diameter butts. But just the job for this kind of fishing, pulling fish from, you know, heavy grounds, basically fishing an area where you've got a bully fish. So I'm going to check the scratching rod now. Those little delicate pieces of mackerel, they don't last very long out there. It's a case of there's either a fish sat on there or the bait's all gone, so let's have a look. Not a lot on there. And I wouldn't mind betting that all of that bait is gone. Yeah, not a trace of the mackerel left on there. Let's get some more. So once again, I'm baiting up the small hooks. I look up and this line is hanging on the ground. Let's have a look. Uh, same thing again, bit of weight there. What have we got? Feels like a small conga again. So I've got to keep this fish moving. 
because there are a few sort of snags and bits out there that we don't want it going in. Yeah, it's another little strap eel. It's frustrating. It's, it always is frustrating when you're trying to target a particular species of fish and, and you keep laying into bycatch every single chuck. It actually looks like the, uh, the lead's gone in there as well. I don't know what's happened. Let's get rid of it anyway. Got to keep on top of this though. If, if you left that out there, you know, it's hooked up, you're not going to get yourself the target species that way. You've got to keep changing rigs. Clip off, clip on. So bait wise there, I've got a lovely big lump of squid. Now, a lot of people fishing these kind of venues, they'd be using extra hooks as in the very vast big mouth extra. Um, personally, I like to use 5.0 standard big mouths. Now the reason for this, they're a little bit sharper than the big mouth extra. The Huss have got really bony hard mouths. They're notorious for being difficult to hook. And these just give me a little bit of an extra edge. On top of that, if they get snagged up, they will bend out eventually. Well, it's just coming up to low water now, and I'm hoping that the flood's going to produce some fish. It's been pretty quiet up until now. Just a few small congers and a nasty cut to the finger. Ouch. So that was the scratching rig jammed in the bottom. Managed to open out one of the hooks, if you can just about see that. I think what I'm actually going to do now is put a big bait on each rod, dispense with the scratching rig, and go all out for that better fish. Now, this is really not the kind of venue where you need massive casts it's literally simple overhead cast 60 70 yards thereabouts just like this and you want those baits to be sitting in the kelp where the huss are so like i say big baits all the way. Well, the left-hand rod just dropped back real slack and now it's tightening up. This is looking interesting. What have we got? Bit of weight to it anyway. I would have said it was a dogfish, and I'm hoping it's not another conger. Oh, it's on the surface. What is it? Come on, show yourself. Oh, it's quite lumpy. I see. Oh, it's quite lumpy, it's because it's staying, staying down all of a sudden. Oh, it is a huss. Well, what do you know? That's not a bad little bull hus. If I hold her up a minute. There you go. And in fact, two things that I've mentioned so far today. If you bear with me one second. So the first thing is that as you can see, the fish has managed to get rid of the hooks straight away, literally as soon as it was on the beach. And they're really well known for doing this. Difficult to hook. When the hooks do get in, you've got to go a little bit careful. Obviously you want to get them in over that rough ground and away from the snags and keep them moving. But at the same time, you don't want to, uh, you don't want to go pulling the hooks out. So secondly, Remember how I said about the kelp and the way that the huss move in shore to, to drop their purses? Well, if we look at this fish, she's a female, and you can just see there the purses hanging out of her. 
but beautiful little fish probably six pound maybe but we'll take that as a target species and we'll possibly even find a bigger one let's go and get her back in the water now it's no easy task getting these fish back all you can do is lob them out into the shallows and hope for the best there comes a wave Whee! told you wet feet well, it sure was encouraging catching that fish just as the tide turned. Now the flood's underway. I think there's every chance of more coming along. And I think there could be bigger fish as well. Got everything crossed. Well, that's a nice bite anyway. So I'm going to hold the rod and see if it develops some more. Oh, it's doing something as I was picking it up then. can be very fiddly bites and it, it does pay to give them a bit of time. I've got to be aware as well this, this tide is now encroaching on where I'm set up so before too long I'm going to have to, to move back up a bit and yeah, the fish is still there. Very delicate bites but oh, it's pulling over a bit now. Let's hit it. Yeah, it's on. What is it? Bit of weight to it. Like I say, you, you want to get it in over the ground, but you don't want to go too mad, so you pull the hooks out. They're often very lightly hooked. Feels like a hut, anyway. Is it going to come up on the top? Oh... Just pulling a bit. Lovely bit of sport though, it really is. Eh? People don't really talk about puffs as a sporting fish, but they definitely are. Right, I can see the shock leader. Right, I can see the fish. Gently does it. Gently does it. Bit of a darker coloured fish this one. You swell to push her in and again. There we go. Yeah, that is a better one. Well, that's a comfortable double, I'd say. If I just unclip this tray and get rid of the rod. Dear, oh dear, that finger hasn't stopped bleeding all morning. <laughs> Just pop that down there a second. I'll show you this fish. Lovely, fat, yeah, fat, weighty fish. There you go. And you just see that, the remainder of that Joey mackerel there in the mouth. And the 5 0 hook nicely in the lip as well. Got lucky with that one. Pop that out in a minute. There we go. It took a little bit of getting out. Really powerful, muscular, strong fish, the bull has. But there's a real, real girth on this one. And I'd say, I'd say that's a double figure fish. Most, most difficult species by far to get a decent picture of, though. You can see the way she's pulling around, writhing in my in my grasp. And again, you can see this is a female that's inshore to drop her purses. But she'll stay still and just about make that out there. Lovely fish, full of buff, full of battle. Amazing looking, prehistoric almost, stunning. Stunning bullwash. Well, the tide's pushed me back up again now. And I've just had another bite on the right-hand side rod. So, 
going to have a look at that. I don't think it's a huss. I think it's probably a dogfish. But it's due a bait change anyway. Let's take a look. Well, there's a bit of weight here, actually. Well, I'd be surprised if this wasn't a huss, in all fairness. I don't know if it'll be the same size as the, the one I pulled in just now. I actually weighed that, and it was 13 pound 10 ounces. Quite pleased with that, in all honesty. Uh, what have we got here? It's got to be a hush, surely. If it stays on. Certainly plenty of weight there. It is, it's another hus. Gently does it. Her mouth is wide open. Lovely stuff. Well, that's three and three casts now. And that's another little trick of theirs as well, puking everything up. We should just let out a bit of water then. Let's get this one back and get another bait out there. I think this is going to have to be my last cast now. It's got a little bit further out so I can still hit the same area where I've been catching the fish. And I've got a whole Joey mackerel this time. I'm just going to front it over there. Well, it really is time for me to get out of here now. It's been a thoroughly enjoyable day. We came here to catch Bullhurst and that's what we did. If I'd only caught that first fish, I'd have been more than happy with that one. But to catch that second one that went over 13 pounds, absolutely made up. Right, well, the tide's coming in. It's pushing me off the mark. Thanks for watching. Please look out for more. Hit the like button, subscribe, do all of that weird social media stuff. I'll catch you again. <laughs>